Hi, let's get started. Thank you all for joining us today. We are here to delve into the rising star of programming languages, Rust. Allow me to introduce myself briefly. I'm David Chocolaty, a student at Brno University of Technology representing the Faculty of Information Technology. It's a pleasure to have you all here. So let me ask a question. Raise your hand if you have ever programmed in Rust. Wow, perfect, some of you, thank you. Don't worry, for the others, we will start with the basics and explain the more complex parts as clearly as possible. Because this is a lightning talk, I will leave time at the end for questions. So, let's dive in. We are going to start with a basic question. Why does Rust matter? What makes it worth exploring and using? Firstly, Rust is known for being a memory-safe programming language. Rust offers performance comparable to C and C++ since it is a systems programming language that compiles to native code. It provides low-level control without sacrificing safety. <laughs> well, not bad, but in which fields can I apply Rust? In general, Rust is suitable for applications that are typically written in C or C++, such as systems, parallel, or network programming. It's also used in embedded systems, game development, high-performance computing, notably in blockchain and cryptography, where Rust is among the top languages used. Hmm, sounds pretty good, but is it really a star? Just take a short look at the news. We can see many recent articles highlighting Rust. Notably, the National Security Agency recommends using memory-safe programming languages, including Rust. Two years later, the White House advocated replacing C and C++ code with memory-safe languages, prominently featuring Rust. And to be honest, we all want to develop memory-safe software. Okay, but what is Rust, really? Rust is a modern systems programming language designed with a focus on safety, speed, and concurrency. It was initially developed by Mozilla and has grown to be widely adopted due to its unique features and advantages. Today, it is an open source project with an active community providing extensive documentation, tutorials, and tools. Now, we are going to answer the following questions. What do we mean by safe? Is Rust 100% memory safe? And what about performance? Let's move to the first example, which is about memory safety. The code is in C++ and demonstrates basic vector manipulation. The example represents throwing a party. Imagine you bought a new fridge that can hold five beers. Later, the fridge broke down and you threw it away by using the delete construction. But then to, you try to grab a beer from a broken fridge. This is known as a use after free error. We start the party with a collection of five beers. Then we add 10 more beers in the add beer function and it's party time. However, uh, uh, then uh, if we allocate a special beer as uh, named as last beer, uh, Rust box, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, in C++, uh, there is possibility of memory leak if uh, we forgot to deleting the last beer. Let's fix these problems in Rust. First, we allocate a new fridge that can hold five beers. By the drop function, we simulate throwing away a broken fridge. If we try to access the fridge after it has been thrown away, it will lead to a compile time error in Rust. Next, we start a party with a collection of five beers and safely add another beer in the add beer function. Uh, even if we uh, allocate a special beer, Rust's box will be automatically deallocated when it goes out of scope, preventing memory release. There is no need to manually manage the memory in Rust. Rust's ownership system 
and borrowing system handles it for us. Let's explain these two terms further. Rust ownership system is a fundamental feature that governs how memory is accessed and managed in Rust programs. In Rust, every value has a single owner responsible for deallocating the memory. When the value is no longer needed, uh, Rust automatically calls its destructor to release the memory it owns. Based on that, after the main function, there is no possibility of a memory leak using Rust ownership. On the other hand, borrowing allows temporary access to a value without transferring ownership, as demonstrated in the addBeer function. Okay, great. So let's move to another cool part, which is Rust's type system. The C++ time system is powerful, but it has some limitations and potential problems compared to more modern languages like Rust. We will demonstrate this with an example involving different kinds of desserts and calculating their yumminess. The C++ code uses inheritance and polymorphism, which can lead to runtime errors if dynamic casts between the base class and derived classes fail. The base class implementation, called dessert, is shown on this slide. C++ type safety is less strict because type mismatches can occur at runtime. Uh, this requires virtual functions and dynamic casting to determine the type of dessert at runtime. Next, in the main function, C++ requires explicit memory management using new and delete as demonstrated by the use of unique pointers in the dessert declaration. This can lead to memory leaks if memory is not properly deallocated or to dangling pointers if memory is deallocated too early or accessed after deallocation. This problem is evident in the code sample when we try to access the candle count method through a dangling pointer. Okay, but what about Rust? Rust uses enums to represent the different desserts, ensuring all cases are handled explicitly. The type system guarantees that all variants are considered preventing runtime type mismatches. Better matching with the match statement allows for concise and clear handling of different dessert types. It ensures all possible cases are covered at compile time, leading to safer and more maintainable code. In the main function, we create a vector of desserts containing cake and cookie, including parameter settings. Uh, then, uh, we if we try to access memory through a dangling pointer, it is not possible because Rust's ownership system prevents accessing dangling pointers. Okay, awesome. So we have fixed the first two C++ problems so far and we have one last code sample to go. Nice work. Let's move on to the last conversion which answers whether Rust is 100% memory safe. To be honest, there are still operations in Rust that require unsafe manipulation. However, we have a nice feature for it, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. In this code, Bart Simpson and his prank help us explain the problems. In the C++ code, we use raw pointers. Of course, there are advanced features in C++ we can use, but there are situations where we have no choice but to use this low-level construction. We are using unsafe pointer arithmetic in this code to access and modify elements of the array. While pointer arithmetic can be efficient, it is error-prone and lacks safety checks. Additionally, the code does not perform bounce checking when accessing elements of the array. Okay, can we do something similar in Rust? Yes, but in a safer way. In Rust, we can use the unsafe block construction. Although the code uses raw pointers and unsafe blocks, Rust enforces memory safety rules at compile time. The use of unsafe blocks clearly defines the unsafe parts of the code, making it easy to identify and review. Well done. 
So, of course, there are more features in Rust, like user-friendly error handling, concurrency, or zero-cost abstractions, for example. Hmm, everything sounds pretty good, but can we get similar performance using Rust as C or C++? We will demonstrate this by using the Benchmarks game performance test. In this test, 10 benchmarks were provided for testing multiple implementations for each language. We can see that the performance of Rust code is similar to C or C++ code and outperforms Go and Swift code. Based on the graph, does it mean that Rust is faster than C or C++? In general, we can't say that because it really depends on the quality of implementation and the type of problem we need to solve. But we can see that the performance of C, C++ and Rust is comparable. The presentation files and source codes are available on GitHub. Useful links, including the Cargo Package Manager and learning resources are provided in the readme file. And uh, what is the conclusion? Rust is awesome in terms of safety and providing low level control. There are plenty of compiler checks and we can be sure that once the code is compiled, it is safe. To be honest, coding in Rust is hard and sometimes we struggle with compiling code. But it makes sense because we really don't want to work in an unsafe environment. And that's why many organizations and companies, including Red Hat, have started using Rust. I hope I managed to bring the world of Rust closer to you and answer the question, why is Rust the rising star? Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay, so now questions. Yeah. The learning curve of Rust compared to, for example, C++ in your perspective. It takes much, much more time. To be honest, in Rust, there is the biggest problem because uh, Rust compiler is perfect, but there are plenty of uh, problems and safety checks, and it is pretty hard uh, to compile the code at the first time if you didn't even learn something about Rust before. Yeah, but uh, I can recommend it. It is hard, but it is valuable. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we have another question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree. I will rep repeat it to the mic. Uh, the question or uh, addition was that uh, Rust is awesome in providing uh, comparable messages and uh, is pretty valuable that it shows where the problem is and how can we show that. Is it correct? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, we have one last minute. Uh, do you have another questions? To be honest, I'm not pretty sure, so I don't want to lie to you, but I can search it. Uh, I can't say it right now, <laughs> yeah. But good question, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So thank you so much, enjoy the rest of the conference, thank you. <laughs>